Buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, I'm having a conversation with uh, a gentleman on YouTube, and uh, to me, uh, he's he makes this uh, comment, and he says, "If Jesus is reigning on Earth for 1,000 years, we will be with him on Earth for 1,000 years." All right, okay, so I um I respond. And I want to share my response with you, and I want to go over it a little bit uh, more detail to make it easier for you to see. All right. So my response was, okay, this idea that Jesus must be on Earth for us to reign with Him is not supported by the Bible at all. So consider this: John 14. I start out in verse 18, because I want to try to make it as short as possible. But here, I want to I want to start in. Uh, Verse, uh, yeah, let's go 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. This is Jesus speaking, obviously. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not, neither knows him, but ye know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. All right, so just by this alone, we can, we can conclude that this comforter, which is the spirit of truth, is the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's abiding in us. He's coming into us. When we are born of God, we are born of him. He abides in us, and we in him. Verse 19, Yet a little while the world sees me no more, but ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me, and he that loves me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, not Judas Iscariot, another Judas, says, Lord, how is it that thou men I'm sorry, Lord, how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not into the world Jesus answered and said unto him if a man loves me he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him he that loves me not keeps not my sayings and the word which ye hear is not mine but the father's which sent me these things I have spoken unto you being yet present with you, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Alright, so, clearly, uh, this is given as, as, as an easy, a simple explanation for what it means to be born of the Spirit of God. When we are born of God, we are born of Jesus. Jesus is God. When we are born of God, God abides in us, and we in God. That's it's like being born of the flesh. We are flesh, right? But when we're born of God, we are God, right? So when we are born of God, we have God in us, and we are in God. And it's, it's pretty simple, uh, really. And it's, it's very clear here in John 14 that Jesus abides in us, and we abide in Him. Alright, now once we establish this, then... We have to acknowledge the fact that Jesus reigns right now. All right, now anybody that's uh, followed me, right, uh, they know that uh, I go over this over and over and over and over over again. 
For example, uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 33, puts it very simply, very plainly, that Jesus reigns over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Jesus reigns right now and forever. The reason I bring that point up is um, just to solidify and to hammer home the point, the fact that Jesus reigns forever and he does not reign for 1,000 years. Revelation 20 never suggests that Jesus reigns for 1,000 years. It's, it's never implied. It, and Revelation 20 is quite clear that, <clears throat> excuse me, that Jesus, uh, I'm sorry, that uh, we, we reign with him. That verse 4, verse 6, both say they lived and reigned with and shall reign with him. All right, speaking of those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Nowhere in Revelation 20 or anywhere else in the Bible does it suggest or imply that Jesus reigns 1,000 years. It would be a contradiction with the entire Bible. You'd have to hold the throw, you'd have to throw the whole thing in the garbage can if that's what it said in Revelation 20 because it'd be no good. It would be a contradiction. It would be a conflict. You'd have a broken scripture. You'd have a, you'd have a piece of garbage is what you'd have. But it doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. It doesn't imply that at all. It's very clear in Revelation 20 that we believers live and reign with, with Christ. It doesn't say Christ reigns a thousand years. It says we reign with him. And that's a point. 99.9% .9 of the teachers today, they don't see it. And I think it's because they're blind because they don't believe the Bible that they hold in their hands. Uh, there's no other explanation. Now, of course, if they don't believe the Bible that they hold in their hand, they deserve to, to uh, be delusional and they deserve to be blind. Because they have not believed, because they do not believe. All right. So back to uh, this comment here, and, and uh, let me just read what my words here. And when we are born of God, Jesus abides in us, and we in Him. He reigns. Therefore, we reign with Him right now. Earlier, I asked, "How can you rightly say that you are saved?" If you are not reigning with Christ right now. See, if, if Christ is abiding in you, right? If he abides in you and you abide in him and he reigns, then obviously you're reigning with him. If you're not reigning with him, then he doesn't abide in you and you're not saved. So essentially people condemn themselves when they say they don't reign with Christ right now. All right? Think about that. And think about it. Jesus does not come to condemn anybody, but that through him the world might be saved. People condemn themselves by their own words. So if you truly are saved, why would you speak words that condemn yourself? And people that say that they don't reign with Christ right now, by their own words, condemn themselves. All right, think about this. Jesus Christ has made us kings and priests unto God right now. That is, we that believe in Him and are born of God. All right, so right now, we are kings and priests unto God. Let's go to, uh-oh, I forgot, 1 Peter, oh, I can't remember that. 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, no? Yeah, 1 Peter chapter 2, excuse me, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people, they show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. See, 
God is the light. God is in the light, and we are in the light, and we are with Him in the light. He reigns, so therefore we reign with Him. We are not in darkness. Right now, we are in the light. Right now. All right, and of course, I gotta, I gotta show the parallel from the Old Testament in Exodus 19. I'm gonna start at verse five here. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. You see the parallel there? But ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and a holy nation of peculiar people. A kingdom of priests and a holy nation of peculiar treasure above all people. You see the parallel, right? I think that's important. Very important, in fact. Okay, so then we go to Revelation 1, for example, possibly. Revelation 1, verse 6, and it very plainly, very clearly says that we are kings and priest unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Right now, we are kings and priests unto God. We sit on heavenly thrones, and we are called to preach the gospel to every creature. Right now. Right now. Okay, in Revelation 5, uh, Revelation 5, excuse me, Revelation 5. Alright. Revelation 5. Uh, right there. And has made us, and has made us unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. We reign with God right now and forever. We have eternal life because he reigns forever. We reign with him forever. We reign right now and forever. All right, consider <laughs> just for a second. Let's play along with this idea. I, 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 it's so hard for me to even imagine these people that say, well, Christ reigns for a thousand years. That suggests that Jesus doesn't reign right now. It suggests that you don't reign with him right now. And then it said also on the flip side, it suggests that you reign with him for a thousand years, but then after the thousand years, you don't reign with him no more. Uh, this is what I mean when I, when I say I don't think people are putting any thought into what it is that they believe. They're just echoing what another man has told them without understanding what it is that they're being told. Uh, there's no other explanation for it. They're trusting man rather than God, and because of that, they deserve to be, be uh, delusional. They do. But I want to make it clear for you, because I care for you. I don't want you to be in error. I don't want anybody to be in error. I want the truth to be known. And I want it to be plain, easy, simple to understand. Because it's right there. In plain English. The pure, perfect word of God. Put as simply as possibly could be put. When we are born of God, we have Jesus abiding in us. And we abide in him. We are born of him. He abides in us. He reigns, therefore we reign with Him. It's pretty simple. It's not rocket science. You don't have to have a master degree in BS or whatever it is that they promote through colleges and the public education system, public private education system. All you have to do is believe the written Word of God. That's it. You don't need access to 
mysterious books in foreign languages that nobody understands. All you need is to believe the Bible that you hold in your hands.